Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the podcast. My name is Juras. I am here with my co-host, Rain. How are you today? As always, feeling pretty good. How are you today? I'm doing okay. And what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we have uh, Christopher Tompkins disappearance case a very strange disappearance of a 20 year old man and this case basically happened 22 years ago back in 2002 20 year old christopher went missing in a really strange circumstance he was going to work and he disappeared seemingly right after work now he was a surveyor what's a surveyor a surveyor is a person who i think goes around and takes various measurements of the ground of the landscape i think they're needed when some sort of a business transaction takes place like someone sells a piece of land then i think some surveyors go to that place and they map out exactly where the land ends and where it begins so it, apparently it's a it's a profession that is uh well basically you end up going to like all sorts of like different locations areas and you just take measurements of the land i'm literally assuming men who with like long measuring tapes and just like measuring all the aspects and all of the angles of the land yeah well i don't think they're using you know measuring tapes <laughs> true I think they're using um, like these gadgets like that, that look like cameras. They kind of look at things. And I think I've seen some here and there in, uh, you know, where we live. But I think the thing is you don't see them all that much because they will go to like very remote locations, like locations that you wouldn't usually go, like someone oh, else's wait. property. So are you saying they're, they work more on undeveloped lands rather than, let's say, I don't know, there's like an empty plot in the middle of the city? I think so. As I understand, they they go into like the more, let's say, less traveled areas, like uh, to handle maybe like some sort of, I don't know, property disputes or I don't know what they do actually, but it's uh, something like that, right? So he goes to work one day and seems like everything was going fine, but all of a sudden he's gone and hey, it's mean? strange like i'm gonna walk you through this uh it's a strange case okay so christopher carlton Tompkins. he was born on december 28th back in 1981 i think at this point he would be 42 if he is still alive he was described as a happy outgoing and hard-working individual he was a devout christian who lived with his mother, Anne McKenzie, in a very small town in the state of Georgia. The town is called Ellerslie. So he was living there at the time of his disappearance. Is it a rural place? Because I've never heard of this town ever. It's a very small town. Mm. It, uh, according to Wikipedia, has a population of 1,000 people, and it's in Harris County, Atlanta. It's actually really close to the Alabama border. It's basically on the edge of the Alabama border. So, you know, on the state line with Alabama. Mm -hmm. I see. So it's basically in the middle of nowhere then? Yeah, I mean, I have a picture here in the notes. Uh, you could find it and uh, from the looks of it it really looks like a very small town it looks like just a few houses it looks like there's a lot of forests and as I understand uh, Christopher uh, sorry yeah Christopher was actually working in a similar wooded area when he went missing I wasn't actually able to find the exact location where he went missing from did you find the picture? Yes. I'm trying to gauge if it's closer to Atlanta or Montgomery. It looks like it's in the middle, right between Montgomery and, right. and Atlanta, right? So he was working as a surveyor for a company. And he was part of a four-man crew. So four people 
including, well, three people and Christopher, they would go and they would uh, survey various lands. And uh, I think they all had to work almost like in a formation. They would have to spread out from each other. And I think they would usually keep a distance of 50 feet between each other. So they're kind of like working in unison. They're close to each other. They could still talk to each other and they could observe each other. They could see each other at work, mm -hmm. but they had to keep a distance. Uh, and they would probably like, you know, walk on the property, take measurements. And uh, they had to like kind of keep their distance for work purposes. The to measure stuff correctly. Yeah, well, basically that's mm -hmm. what the job does, right? Well, I even actually looked into what the surveyors, surveyors do. Apparently, they mark and document the location of legal property lines. For example, when a house or commercial building is bought or sold, these people may mark property boundaries to prevent or resolve disputes. Much of the measuring equipment surveyors use to incorporate the latest mapping technology I, as I understand. I'm curious though, as someone who completely doesn't know anything about surveyors, I'm wondering if it's a skill job or do you, you could just learn on the spot, you know what I mean? It's actually a good question. I, I, I did go on like a Reddit thread a little bit on surveyors because mm -hmm. I was trying to find out the nuances of the job. I think it's a mixture of you have to have brains you but need a degree for it? No. I don't think you need a degree for it. I think you just need license. You need oh. to be a licensed surveyor in your state, if I understand correctly. So basically, some people mentioned that in order to be a good surveyor, you need a mix of a brain to understand the landscape and understand what's happening, and also the love of basically walking in random areas like you will find yourself walking through woods strange landscapes um, random fields in the middle of nowhere and you're gonna basically try to understand the landscape and try to get some measurements sounds like it fits you honestly. oh i love this job sounds <laughs> sounds like i would i would give it a try probably not like full time because mm -hmm. i think eventually it would kind of get boring but to do part-time surveyor just stuff walking around and mm -hmm. taking some pictures mm -hmm. i mean obviously it's more to than definitely that. it's more complicated than what we make it out to be but perhaps i would love time it and apparently explore. it's a pretty well-paying job also Ooh. and apparently there's there's a need for new surveyors at least in in america allegedly according to some reddit people time to explore a new career then maybe <laughs> yeah let's move to the usa Okay, so Christopher disappeared on January 25th. So it was uh, January. I'm trying to understand. Georgia, January, close to the Alabama border. So Georgia is a little bit sa uh, southern. I'm thinking, what's a January like in Georgia? Probably cold. I mean, I don't know many places where January is not cold, right? Florida. Well, Florida, yeah, I mean, you're right. It's kind of close to Florida also. I don't know. I guess, I guess we'll we'll wait for someone in the comments. Or, actually, I see you're googling. What what's a January like in in in, uh, in Georgia? Actually, they have four seasons. It says here that. Uh, wait, does Georgia? Wait, it's pretty funny because the first thing that popped up is the country. Yeah, no Georgia, <laughs> and you know what's the funny part? I think the country and the state might have this a similar. Uh, Similar weather. Georgia, the country. Really? Okay. Climate of Georgia, U.S. state. Short, mild winters and hot, long summers. Uh, as expected. So I, I reckon they're a little bit warmer than here. Yeah. So in January, average temperatures are 39 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 4 degrees Celsius. Ah, uh, okay. So they're... Okay. So they're like the U.K., kind of seems so yeah okay it's still cold though nevertheless it's it's cold okay so we have uh january 25th 
on 2002 when 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 Christopher went missing. Now, this was a Friday. I would like to mention, and you know we have to take into account the Friday is probably the most notable notable day of the week because you know what comes after Friday. The most awaited weekend. Yeah, boozy mm-hmm. Saturday, right? Yep. So basically, we could kind of imagine that maybe people are already kind of relaxed a little bit on the job, right? Oh, definitely. Especially if it's a Friday. If it's a Friday, yeah. you know, I mean, you're going to enjoy the weekend. So so people's prob- people pre- probably feel somewhat happy. At least I'm happy on the Or Friday. at least a little bit more relaxed. Yeah, exactly. Let's say. Yeah, they're already they're ready for the weekend, right? So Christopher did his regular thing, you know? He showed up to work at 8 a.m. in the morning and afterwards he rode to the job site with a co-worker so basically i think he drove to the to his office building in his own car and then he took his uh, co-worker's car and the co-worker with him to go to the job site because no need to take two cars if you're going to the same place makes okay. sense yeah makes sense so far However, I'm kind of wondering, like, how far is this location from their actual office? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not really sure, but they went to, a, to like, a location called, well, it was basically mentioned near County Line Road in Harris County, Georgia. So I remember I was able to find that kind of general location. If you could imagine, it's just a very wooden, like, area. kind basically of Basically a forest? Or yeah, less. kind of, kind of forest. If you recall, you've already looked at the picture of uh, of uh, Ellerslie. Well, that's kind of like similar. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just a road in a mm-hmm. foresty area. It's a sub, uh, like not a very city like area. Just like some woods here and there. Okay, makes sense so far. Yeah. So Chris and uh, the three other people that he worked that day they were all working in a line formation spaced roughly 50 feet apart the men stopped for lunch after they finished up with work on the first part of the day and they returned home uh, returned back to the work site and then at approximately 1 30 p.m they resumed working one of the surveyors was in the middle of a conversation with christopher when he looked away for a brief minute And then turned his head again to Christopher. And uh, just seconds later, Christopher was inexplicably missing. His tools were still on the ground, right where he had left them. But Christopher was gone. Just like that. Just like that. No, because I'm kind of picturing. It's probably seconds. Can you Google something? Of course, yeah. Can you Google what is 50 feet in meters? And I know some people are thinking, why are we doing this? Well, we are not from... We, we use the metric system here, so we kind of get confused easily with the feet. 15.24 meters. 15 point, okay, so that's really close. 50 feet is very close. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, not, it's like very close. So how do you go missing? Yeah, so I'm expecting, I'm kind of like picturing this scenario in my head wherein the co-worker was just working, of course. He looked somewhere else for just mere seconds, maybe let's say three seconds, and the next thing he knows. And Christopher is gone. Yeah. But it's kind of strange, It's really strange. I don't understand how you walk in a line and I guess at this point, as I understand, Christopher is walking in a line with only one guy because the other guys are like maybe... A little bit farther away. Somewhere far away. Or maybe they were already not in that 50 feet apart kind of lineup at this point. That's true. And it's pretty strange that there were no noises that were reported or heard. Yeah. So... It's like, it's like Christopher just vanished out of thin air. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, and that's where we're going to get into some stuff real soon. So, none of his co-workers had seen or heard anything strange. 
So at first, they assumed that Christopher had simply walked into the woods to relieve himself. But after several minutes, when he did not return, they began to search the immediate area and they could not find Christopher. One of them called his wife to tell that Christopher was missing and they couldn't find him anywhere. And strangely, however, Christopher's mother was not called to be informed that her son is missing until 4.15 p.m. And I assume this is like almost several hours after he's last seen. Mm -hmm. And I found it strange that none of the three surveyors called Christopher's mom? Why, why would one of them call his own wife? I am picturing something like maybe they are close. They had a close relationship with each other. And maybe Christopher uh, disappeared. And perhaps maybe the co-workers who wanted to cover for him. Maybe they're thinking, oh, he snuck out. But let's wait. And then one dude called his wife. Just, I don't know, an update? And then they waited hours, and when Christopher doesn't, didn't seem to be reappearing, that's when they raised the alarm. But why wouldn't Christopher just simply tell his best buds at work that he is going to sneak out? I have no idea, why but would it he, seems like... Why would he sneak out and then assume that these three great guys will just... Cover up for him. Cover up for him. I don't know. I kind of get that vibe that they're just trying to cover up for him. Maybe. Okay. There's a possible scenario that they were just trying to cover up for him. Mm -hmm. in, or another scenario that they're trying to cover up for themselves. Yeah, I'm thinking about that other scenario right, right? now. Yeah, it's I pretty have, strange. Yeah, I have a different scenario in my head right now. But okay. So Christopher was reported missing to the police eventually. Uh I guess by the family members. Eventually? You meant like maybe a couple of days after? I think it was on the same day. Oh, nice. Police quickly found a boot hanging from the top of a barbed wire fence in the wooded area near where Christopher was last seen. It was confirmed to belong to him. All of his tools were lying on the ground at the worksite. On that same fence, they also discovered a blue tread, presumably from his pants. Some sources report that his pants were found too, but it's unclear whether this is accurate or not. And also coins were found on the ground, and it's believed that it was his coins. I think it was like 12 cents or something like that in total. And it was at the location at the barbed wire place. However, no blood or signs of a struggle was found. So that begs the question, how did the boot end up on the fence, on the top of the fence? Do you think that Christopher tried to climb over and somehow the boot just got stuck on top of the fence? I think so. It depends on what type of boot he was wearing. He Are was he wearing Tim's, like Tim's. What? You know what that is? Yeah, with like shoelaces and all. Like the Timberland. Mm -hmm. Like the cool shoes. <laughs> like mountain hiking shoes, let's yeah, say. Yeah, Timberland. So they're pretty sturdy and I don't know, they wouldn't slip. Right? How would it slip? And how how is it ending up on the top of the fence? Exactly, because I actually and why would pictured... You, why would you not take them... Why would you not... If you're climbing over a fence and somehow your shoe gets stuck on a, on top of a fence, I think we would really need to see the pictures of how this looks like. Because I can't even imagine a scenario where a man climbs over a barbed fence and his shoe gets... Uh, maybe... But I mean, that really would mean that he didn't tie his shoes or something. I have this scenario in my head wherein he was running from something... Or someone, and he climbed over that fence in a rush. Yeah, and maybe it fell down. Fell down. Maybe his boot, one of his. He boots, was rushing. Yeah, he got was stuck running in, on top. 
Do you think he was running from something and he did not have enough time to get the boot back? I, I think it screams adrenaline to me because like there's a boot on top of the fence, a string of, uh, let's yeah. assume, jeans, and then coins. So it seems like he climbed up the fence and he like jumped down or like maybe even fell down head first and just, just kept running. Perhaps. Because why would the coins be there? He wouldn't drop the coins. Maybe he was just upside down. The coins fell from his jeans. Yeah, that's a good point. How right? the, yeah, actually a good observation. And we don't really know what exactly was over on the other side of the fence. But we know that without any forensic evidence or eyewitness reports, the investigation hit a standstill for a while. But six months later, his other work boot was actually found by a farmer on private property less than one mile away. The boot was found on a swampy part of land about 900 yards away from where he was last seen. Nothing else belonging to Christopher has ever been discovered. But his other shoe ends up, like, close to a mile away in some person's private property in the swampy area. Yeah, this part doesn't add up. At so, all. would that mean that Christopher just continued walking for one mile with the boot and then somehow lost his second boot altogether? Because his remains never been found nor any pieces of his I guess DNA blood other, other clothing nothing nothing it could be that maybe he lost his boot maybe somewhere or, 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 like maybe along the way it. maybe he lost the boot somewhere along the way and then maybe some animals took it to where it was found but or, I'm thinking I'm thinking what kind of animals are there in Georgia actually can you google again I'm on it again can you Google? Can you Google what kind of animals can be found on in in the state of Georgia? Yeah, what kind of animals? I wonder. I wonder. Do they have bears? I think it's kind of possible, right? I mean, it's a wooded area, or wolves at the very least. Uh, seems like we have deer, squirrel, American black bear, American black bear. Oh, American black bear. Yeah. yeah. Do they have wolves? Oh, probably they do. Fox? Fox. Uh, like, oh, bobcat. Uh, oh, yeah, that's also dangerous. Uh, I've been trying to find out some more, but I can see gr green tree frog. Can you, that can, doesn't make can sense. You Google, can you Google man attacked by a wild animal in Georgia? Just to see if this is a, a thing. Because this is one of the lines of thinking that maybe Christopher could have been attacked. Okay. Georgia. Make sure it's the U.S. state. A tiger. Mole's man. Oh, but this is a zoo. Okay. No, Sorry, no. never mind. Yeah. The pressure is on. We're all waiting for the results. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, powerful grizzly bear. Attacks a man? Yeah, but anything other than that? Nothing. Okay, but they do have beers. Let's establish that, that Georgia has beers. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty serious animal that could Wait, harm you. 50-pound rabid beaver attacks girls swimming in Georgia Lake. A father beats animal to death. Beaver. There's no way. Beaver? Yeah, I don't think this was happening at a, like a body of water, as I understand. There was a swamp. Yeah, I don't think a beaver would have attacked. And either way. I, yeah. I, I, but let's establish that they do have beers, okay? Okay, I'm assuming so far from how the scenario has been laid. He saw something. He ran in panic, perhaps. Started climbing. Probably also because of panic, 
fell down or like I don't know he dived headfirst I uh, lost his boot on top of the fence kept on running and running for some weird reason and maybe when he was running he realized like it's harder to run with only one boot on and ditch the other boot and just kept on running maybe that's a good thought and then he he probably got lost somewhere in the swamp that's a good thought no really the I never really understood why would he take off his second boot, but I guess because you know those Timberlands, they have a big base. They're kind of like a chunky base. And if you lose one of them, you're basically walking like very in a very uneven manner. It's not yeah. comfortable at all. Good, good point. That's a, I think that's a possibility. Maybe he was actually you know running further up the forest. And he takes his other shoe off. Running away from what though? Or whom? Well, let's let's dig in here a little bit more. Let's see what else I have here. So in absence of any direct evidence of foul play or any other explanation, because it seemed like he just vanished, uh, the authorities eventually closed his case, coming to a rather puzzling conclusion that he had simply walked off to start a new life kind of a strange time to start a new life in my opinion why even go to work why even work and have lunch and then start a new life after lunch i mean i guess it makes sense to start a new life with a full belly but still with a bag full of your stuff yeah with your wallet and everything i don't know i don't and, buy it and a pair of boots his fellow surveyors have never been investigated as suspects in his disappearance oh oh boy oh this is interesting I though one why. of them retained the lawyer immediately after christopher went missing neither their identities nor the company that they all worked for have ever been released to the public so what do you make of that one guy who got a lawyer honestly pretty smart if he's, he wasn't hiding anything he was pretty smart to do that. But if he was hiding something, you know what? Also it's pretty also, smart. It's also pretty smart. Yeah, pretty smart move in general. What do you think? Do you think that dude was hiding something? I mean, I don't know what to think of. I, I don't even know if it's the guy who last spoke to Christopher. Yeah, because if it was one of those other two, somewhere farther away, yeah, then they're most likely not involved. Like, three men with Christopher that day the one with him when he disappeared is probably the most suspicious one of course it is also known in addition to all the information that we talked about so far is that Christopher's mother Anne McKenzie knew and worked as a babysitter for the owner of that company Okay, so that's a pretty strange coincidence or like a connection, right? And I'm even I feel thinking like this is such a small town. I think it's a small town, and I think maybe there's a chance that Anne kind of hooked up the job for Christopher. Yeah. Because maybe the boss was like, "You have a son. Maybe he would like to try out being a surveyor." Or vice versa. Yeah, because we do not know how long Christopher was at this job, so we don't know if he was friends with anyone there or anything. It was mentioned on some sources that he enjoyed his work, but we don't really know exactly how long he had been at it. He couldn't be working for that long. He was only 20. Christopher's boss reportedly said that Christopher had been acting strangely leading up to his disappearance, but he never elaborated on this ambiguous statement. However, his mother Anne refuted this assertion about her son's behavior. She said that Chris lived with her and she saw him every day. There was neither strange behavior on his part nor any distress that he had, uh, that she was able to observe. So mother declines this line of thinking that Christopher was acting strange leading up to the disappearance. It's a very vague comment to make. What does that mean? 
we don't know any more information. It could potentially be just minds playing tricks. Because, for example, I disappear today. Someone might say that I started acting weird before I disappeared. I mean, you act weird all the time. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> so, yeah, it but, wouldn't work in your case. No, but... <laughs> thank you for that. But anyways, I think I believe the mother a little bit more. Because the mother wasn't biased. Maybe she is? She was? But I don't think so. Because she... She sees Christopher every day. And talks talked with him every day so if she says like nothing seemed to be off definitely nothing seemed to be off i mean i think it's we don't know we did we did we weren't there that's true we don't know we can christopher, always assume yeah christopher maybe he was acting weird who knows so but is there any other person that claimed that he was acting strange other than that boss so not that we know of so we have one person, the mother, who claims that he wasn't acting strange, but there was also another dude who said that he was. Yeah. We need some more. Yeah, we need some more information on this situation. Mm -hmm. So Anne went on to say that she believed that Christopher was a victim of foul play and that his three co-workers know more than what they told investigators. She said, I truly believe in my heart that my son is no longer alive. However, I need closure. I need to know what happened that day and where my son's body is. So mother suspects that the other three co-workers had something to do with Christopher's disappearance. Yeah, that's true. That could potentially be the case as well. I think we need a water break and right after we're gonna get into some pretty interesting details surrounding this strange cave. So hold on guys, just need to sip some water. All right, we're back from the water break. So the main theories in this situation, well, one of the things worth mentioning is that there's the association with the missing 411 cases in which people have mysteriously vanished in the wilderness. Missing 411, I think is a theory about people who went missing in the foresty areas and uh, apparently some people are trying to connect a bunch of similar cases to this one big theory that they are all i don't know like getting abducted by aliens or sasquatch i don't exactly know what the missing what is sasquatch uh, bigfoot oh yeah so i don't know much about that missing 411 so i think christopher's case kind of falls under the f missing 411 big grandiose theory that something is happening in American forests. Mm -hmm. A number of other bizarre theories have risen about it, including alien abductions also, uh, which is kind of strange, but you know, we have to also consider aliens. Okay, but I'm like thinking from that perspective, if he was abducted by, by aliens, then why was his other boot in the swamp? You think he got chased by aliens? By aliens and they caught him eventually? Yeah, I was just like, I don't know, picturing UFO light lifting him up. Yeah, it's a strange thing, you know. I don't I don't know if we have any more uh, clues uh, that would connect his disappearance to aliens, though. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, Christopher's case is no longer that active anymore. And there have been no further developments, but his uh, remaining remaining family and friends, as well as those familiar with the case, hope one day to have definitive answers about what happened to him on the January day in 2002. And this case has been mentioned on a website called thecrimewire.com. So thecrimewire.com, it's basically a site where you could find all kinds of true crime stories. And uh, Christopher's uh, case is one of the stories on the website. And at the very bottom of his article on the website, they have a poll. And uh, people get to vote what they think happened to Christopher. So there were four options. The first option is that he ran away to start a new life. 
Second one that he was a victim of foul play and his co-workers know something about it. Uh, the other one was he was attacked by a cryptid, like a Bigfoot or something like that. And the last one that he was abducted by aliens. And the unanimous, overwhelming 89... Let me guess. Okay. Aliens. No. Oh. <laughs> aliens only 3%. The overwhelming majority of people, 89% of them, voted that Christopher was a victim of foul play and his co-workers knew something about it. And in total, 1,500 people voted. And I actually also voted, and I voted for the same thing. And yeah, it makes sense to me that a lot of people are thinking that, you know, from the information that we have, I mean, how could you lean any other way? I would immediately uh, rule out the running away theory. I don't think. Oh yeah, definitely. Away. It's not the right place. It's it wasn't the right time. No, it no. just made no sense. He was attacked by a cryptid or abducted by aliens. I'm not sure about that, but I'm th do you thinking about those beers, the the black beer. Uh huh. I mean, but the only problem here is that. How would it even happen? Okay, so and I... And why only him? Why only him? What I, happened to the other three? So I think there could be a chance where... Okay, maybe Christopher... I think... I think there could be a scenario where he actually goes to, you know, piss in the, in the woods. Can you even say that on YouTube? I think I can. I, I definitely think I can. <laughs> All right. So I think he, there is a chance that he goes into the woods, seemingly just, you know... To just urinate I had to switch it up so nice switch up. yeah and then something happens there and that's when he runs because otherwise I don't know how they would not notice or hear something weird happening and that was the first uh, thing that uh, the co-workers assumed so maybe it somehow made sense for them uh, maybe it makes sense that Christopher went to go into the woods to like you know relieve himself because that was the first thing they claimed and apparently law enforcement didn't really investigate the co-workers so it's kind of strange because it makes me question what does law enforcement know about the moments leading up to his disappearance is it really that clear cut that the co-workers were not involved in this one i wish to have some more information about the details leading to his disappearance like the exact like minutes before what happened you know i would like to know the more yeah that's true i'm actually torn because i am leaning towards three different ones okay let's hear them one is that he ran away from something that he only saw Maybe the bear. He was trying to run away from it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's It couldn't be like just a bug or a bee. Because he ran so far away. So yeah. it must be something that you've seen that spooked him out so much. And the second one is, I don't know, something about mental illness. Maybe paranoia, delusion, schizophrenia. Yeah, something that just happened out of nowhere. Yeah, it got triggered by something or and or someone and he just yeah. tried to run away from it. And I guess that would correlate with the boss saying that he has been acting strange leading yeah. up to his disappearance. Mm-hmm. We don't okay. we don't have much information about it though because we I mean the co-workers, the ones that were with him last, I would love to know what happened actually there. Like, how was he acting before oh, yeah. he disappeared? Like, was he okay? Was he normal? Was he happy? Was he sad? Like, anything. But yeah, and the third one is that the co-workers did something. And they mm -hmm. were covering up for themselves. Oh, hey, I just... I just thought of another thing mm -hmm. maybe there was a fight in there where Be between, the, between co the co-workers and christopher and then he ran away and they just tried to cover up for each other mm, so you don't think they killed him but you think that he ran for his life and oh, then got lost i definitely think that they might 
they, there's a chance that they might have killed him. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that they killed him, killed him. There might be a chance. But I also am thinking that maybe there was a fight. Maybe there was, I don't know, a gun. So somehow I also forgot to mention this one mm-hmm. detail that's kind of crucial. That one of the surveyors was actually convicted of an unrelated violent crime and was given a long prison sentence just a month after Christopher's disappearance. Really? You forgot that information? Yeah, I don't actually it's kind of crazy because I even have it like highlighted in the notes and it's literally the only piece of information that I just kind of <laughs> jumped past. I really thought this kind of small piece of information you were mentioned you're going to mention was I don't know his pants were actually brown. Nope, it's that one of the guys <laughs> committed violent crimes soon after his disappearance and got the long prison sentence. What kind of crime, though? Nothing. We, I tried to find out who these people were. N- there's nothing online. You cannot find any details about who these three surveyors were. There's nothing. Law enforcement never publicly announced their names. Oh, jeez. Well, that... I don't know. That makes me believe even more that the co-workers were involved. Either they covered up for themselves, aka foul play, or there was a fight. Things escalated and Christopher got so scared he ran away. And yeah. he tried to find his way back or, I don't know, way back home or by the road. Never really did. So what I'm thinking is that for me personally, it was kind of strange that the the manner that he went missing in that, oh, one colleague just looks away for a few moments and then boom, he's gone. That's kind of strange. Also kind of feel it like it was strange that his mother was called like at the end of the workday, which is bizarre. Yeah, like it's some, something, right? Yeah, something. I'm also thinking what type of a setup they had after lunch. Were they still working in close proximity or not really? What I'm saying is that is it possible that one of the men killed the well killed Christopher without the other two guys noticing? But I don't think that would be possible because I do think that to kind of hide Christopher's body in this circumstance if they committed the murder, I think they all have to work together for it. Yeah, definitely, because his body was never found. His body is never found, so if they did murder him, I think it's a high chance that they may have, you know, hid his body somewhere. But obviously, uh, innocent until proven guilty, remember? So we can't fully just claim that Christopher was murdered by his colleagues. All I'm going to say is that it sure looks suspicious. Extremely suspicious. It looks extremely suspicious. I'm not. I'm not accusing those guys because I. I'm always imagining what if they're innocent and how would I feel if someone was, you know, claiming that I've killed someone when I haven't. You know, it's a terrible feeling. But at the same time, all I'm gonna say this is looking very suspicious. Yeah, with the information that's accessible. It's suspicious. It's really suspicious. Yeah, like, it looks very suspicious. Like, I'm thinking another possibility could be, okay, so he was reported that he was acting strange and they had lunch. I'm thinking maybe there's a chance that... Drunk? Not necessarily drunk, but maybe he took a drug or something during lunchtime. Uh, I don't know. From- and it took uh, a, an effect. Because think about it, you're, you're a surveyor. I mean, it's Friday. You're probably bored by Friday. You can't wait to get off work. It's lunchtime. And you know you still have to do like the last four hours before you get to kind of relax on the weekend. Maybe you would, you know, have some drug to kind of speed things up. I'm just thinking that could be a scenario. That could be a scenario. But there's nothing absolutely to indicate that Christopher was uh, on any type of drug. Yeah, and the way he was described, he seemed like, He's not going to venture into that. Yeah, he was a devout Christian. He was happy, outgoing. So who knows? But all I'm going to say is that, yeah, the the manner of his disappearance from the information we have is very suspicious. Yep, definitely. 
Do you have any other thoughts about this case? Like anything else you have in your mind or something? No, I think I already said everything. It could either be something or someone spooked him out that spooked he just out, ran yeah. away. Or those three co-workers were involved. Because right now I'm just trying to think. I do think that co-worker involvement could have happened. Mm -hmm. And mind you, Christopher was black. Oh, do you think there's like a... I don't know what kind of, you know, but, uh, you know. But this happened like when again? Early 2000s. Early 2000s. So was it still... Well... Yeah. Was it? I mean, I don't know. We I've never been to America. And uh, basically, well, we don't know. Maybe it was a team of four black guys. So that would be Yeah, make possibly, sense. yeah. But at the same time, that could be a thing that the co-workers, maybe for some, one or the other reason, murdered Christopher. Another thing I'm thinking about how likely is that he actually did go into the woods to relieve himself and then and like saw, saw, a bear. A, saw a bear and then started running. And then maybe the bear either caught up with him or he got lost in the woods. I think that could be happening. I think there is a slight chance. I'm not saying that happened, but I think that, that might be or happening. Or maybe not even a bear. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Like a cougar? Yeah. And then I would say the last third possibility in my head is that it's either some sort of drug or like psych psychological thing that may have just caused him to just walk into the woods i don't really see how that happens but but yeah so i'm kind of leaning towards like three directions here three possibilities and if i had to like bet my money on one of them you know i probably am thinking that something with the co-workers just because this is just because this makes sense to me, but I don't. Time has passed before they actually said. But anything. then, then the shoes. Then when you think about the second shoe being found in the middle of like some private property, that would mean that they would have to murder him, hide his body, but then scatter, and, walk. and then scatter his shoes already. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It seems like a lot of. It seems like a lot of work to do actually. Why would you even scatter the shoes? Mm -hmm. Why why would you fabricate this whole um, whole lie? This this whole uh, not necessarily the lie, but uh, why would you put his shoe on top of the fence? Leave a few coins. And what's the story? If they actually did the cover up, what story were they aiming for? Well, I guess they were aiming for that he ran away into the woods and then then he was going he was running like crazy and he, he tried to jump over the fence and then but they wait. never really claimed that it was just like and one, they, and they, the and one then, time he was here and, and the next then second poof. yeah and then but i guess they, well he never claimed it but i guess the i guess the logic would be that they set up the they staged oh. the crime scene to make it look like he did it and then you know but that would mean that they would have to travel a mile into like someone else the forest the area into, into a swamp yeah and i don't think any of them really i mean it would be all three of them would have to murder him because all three of them would have to like be on board with like with the uh, with with hiding with what's the happening crime. basically like with 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 one dude's plan all yeah. of them have to be on board with yeah. one plan. I mean. Yeah, that means that the other two guys are like... Because if only one of them killed Christopher, I don't think the other two guys would be like, okay, now let's cover it up. No, if you're just a colleague at work, you would tell on them. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't Definitely. try to like cover a murder just with a random colleague. Mm -hmm. How about a fight then? What if there was a fight in that site? And then maybe intimidation ah. and then for example maybe one of them had a gun tried to threaten christopher and then christopher ran away ran away and got Out lost here uh, yep i think there's also a chance that yeah maybe maybe something like that happened where they threatened him and he ran into the forest for his life seemingly 
because maybe he was thinking that they are gonna kill him and then he never resurfaced and he maybe died in the forest maybe he got lost or something like mm -hmm. that or encountered the wild animal mm -hmm. but the three guys one of them calls the wife you know like maybe asks for some you know like things might get weird right now just relax a bit you know and then later on they call the mother after the after they have their story down and 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 they just keep the lie going yeah that's true but why though why would they be fine i mean honestly they could people could fight for any that's true over any stupid i'm not reason. even sure if it's like i don't know involves the race oh no i'm not even thinking about that anymore right yeah i, I guess there's a, a chance i didn't even consider that so maybe it's like maybe something personal if that ever was the case yeah i mean it, it doesn't have to be like a racial thing you know I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not even considering that at this point i'm just thinking in general like maybe someone owes some money or like oh or, or money. maybe or, or maybe yeah. they were like trashing each other at work well and then one guy got super pissed and pulled out a gun you know it could be something like that could be something as simple as that yeah yeah because right. he did like his job so why would he enjoy the job and then one day everyone turns on him because he's black it doesn't make that much sense nope like it would be known from day one that they're they don't like you you know i don't think there's a chance that oh like one day they're like oh we're gonna flip that's true that's very true nah i don't think so and also it's a bad place to do it if you're gonna kill someone you don't want to actually do it on the work like time because you are immediately the prime suspect if you're if you really hate that guy you're gonna do it with like a mask and you're gonna do it like in the dark when he's like walking somewhere you know what i mean yeah. you're, you're, you're not gonna get rid of that person at work when you're literally gonna be immediately a person of interest yeah no this is actually why it convinced me that maybe the co-workers were not involved yeah or or maybe they were involved in some way Hmm. like scaring him away to the point where he got lost in the woods i think that might be happening i think that's a line of thinking True. right i feel like we had a great discussion so far about christopher's case christopher tompkins 20 year old man still missing it's been 22 years georgia on the border with alabama who knows what happened to him? I don't think he's alive personally because he he he, he never resurfaced and his shoes that were on the ground. Yeah, and I think if he was ever alive, he'd come back for his mom. He would definitely come back for his mother. It seems like from the story here, I would like to say that I don't have anything else to say. All I want to say is thank you so much for. Togi Poo Gaming 3775. Hopefully, I did not butcher the name. Thank you so much for suggesting that case. Thank you very much. Uh, and Toby? we're. Togi. Toby. Togi. Togi. Oh, we're definitely butchering his name. Please don't hear I'm us. so sorry. Oh, I can't see. It's. Uh, it's. Oh, Togi Poo. Togi Poo Gaming Tree Sounds Okay, it's it's not the, okay. We butchered the name, but it's uh, it's okay to butcher that type of name. <laughs> I thought his real name was Togi. No, just some person named Togi. Thank you so much for suggesting this case. Uh, this one was a very interesting one to research. It's a good one. Very interesting. Very research, bizarre. Very bizarre. And then on top of that, I think it's something that is worth talking about because we're sp spreading awareness and hopefully we can get some more information soon coming out of uh, Christopher Tompkins case. And until that time, I think we should sign out for now and uh, let's uh, work on some more cases very soon. Thank you guys for listening and uh, we'll talk to you uh, soon. Stay safe out there, guys. See you. Bye.